Hartley, good morning. Good afternoon. Uh, well, we got another episode. I'm not down in spirits. I'll get picked up, I promise. It's just, <laughs> we were just discussing this off off air, quote unquote. It's just, there's not a lot of stuff going on these days. We're going to focus most of our attention on the latest news around the iMac, which is, I mean, largely untouched for a while now. We got the, the latest, like what, M1 <clears throat> iMac, big redesign, and then nothing's happened. And then, like, any larger iMac over 24 inches, nothing has happened since, what, like 2019? Um, so it's been a while, right? When was the last, like, 27-inch iMac? Well, maybe the non-pro. The iMac Pro got updated in 2019, right? The iMac Pro was, I think it was, like, a 2018 update. I don't remember the iMac Pro, I mean, but we did get a... It came out in 2017, It came out in 2017. Right, the end of that. Um, but what ended up happening, of course, is that the 27-inch model ended up eclipsing the... Well, they were both 27 inches, but the standard right. iMac right, ended cause... up e eclipsing the iMac Pro in terms of power and capabilities because they both have the same display panel. So eventually, the updates that were given to that machine were just providing better hardware and better specifications. So that became like an iMac Pro anyway. I am really looking forward to a new iMac, mostly a larger iMac. Like we've seen all of these rumors about, I mean, we've been expecting a new iMac Pro, but like it's not going to be called the iMac Pro. And it's been through all of this, you know, stuff back and forth. And now we're just waiting for M3, basically. Is that what's going on? Do you want to start with the 24 or do you want to go with the more spicy stuff and go up to the bigger, bigger version? Let's start with a, with a 24 inch because we're okay. expecting less than that and we're expecting it sooner. Um, yeah, we're not going to get a redesign since we just got one, right? Yeah, and that was, I mean, it's the, I think as it stands, this is the only M1 uh, Mac that is still on sale as the latest generation model. And it is the only M1 Mac other than the M1 MacBook Air that is yeah. still on sale. Um, and this came out in April of 2021. So... Uh -huh. That is now quite some time ago. Um, and all that we're really expecting for the new model is just the M3 chip, which should be a substantial upgrade because to go from M1 to M3 will be way bigger than M1 to M2 um, and even right. from M2 to M3 just because of that. Uh, you're getting not only the... the uh, Well, you're, you're, you're getting the, the upgrades that um, and the increase in... Um, clock speed that you got from m1 to m2 but then you're also getting the uh three nanometer fabrication process which is going to really make a very big difference with m3 um, and of course in a desktop device where you're not so concerned about efficiency um, they can really make it qu quite uh quite a high performance machine compared to maybe like the m3 macbook air so what changes are you looking forward to then in this because there's not like I don't know, they're not going to redesign <clears throat> like we talked about. I doubt they're even going to do new colors. Do you think they would do new colors? I think they will, yeah. I you think, think they so? Almost, I think they will because the IMAX colors um, were a bit weird in the way they were introduced because Ugh. obviously they're these two-tone colors and it's so like bad. they call it a, a pink IMAX when it's mostly red and from behind right. it is strikingly red. Yeah. Um, and I also think that, uh, that those colors broadly aligned to the airpods max um so they they broadly match up so the pink uh matches the red or pink airpods max and the green um and i know they don't have a color like for like for all of them but those are the closest matches we've now moved on you know we have midnight and we have starlight and these are the colors that we have now had through the iphone 13 generation iphone 14 generation we will have going into the iphone 15 so by then there's three generations of iPhone, three three changes of Apple's sort of standardized color palette, if there is such a thing. They've yeah. got to give it an update. And I think that it's, it's you know, Apple always does it with colors. They've got, this is a device that was, it's not like us talking about new colors for like the iPad Pro, which has never been available in, in uh, other than space gray and silver. We're talking about a machine that the whole deal with it when they, the marketing around it was the colors. That was the exciting thing because we'd never seen a desktop Mac in colors like that. So I think it'd be really exciting to get something in midnight. A midnight 24-inch iMac could look really nice with a lighter yeah. sort of space gray on the front and a darker midnight on the back. Um, and then 
uh, Starlight would also look really nice, I think, um, and look very new. I think a Starlight iMac um, would really be a good way to really show that it's a new model. Um, Because I think on a device of that size, it would be very different. Hey guys, just want to let you know that this episode of the Mac Rumor Show is sponsored by Mint Mobile. After years of fine print contracts and getting ripped off by big wireless providers, if we've learned anything, it's that there's always a catch. So when I first heard that Mint Mobile offers premium wireless starting at just $15 a month, I thought there's got to be a catch, right? But after talking to them and using their service, it's just kind of all made sense. There really isn't one. Mint Mobile's secret sauce is that they're the first company to sell wireless service online only. They cut out the cost of retail stores and pass those sweet savings directly to you. Nobody likes huge phone bills with a bunch of hidden charges that come and go. Your bill's never the same. And then you got to like call them up and be like, hey, what's the deal here? Why am I getting charged X, Y? And that just doesn't happen with Mint Mobile. They give you premium service for just 15 bucks a month. So $15 for one line, or you can start a family plan, and all plans come with unlimited talk, text, and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. I have been loving not only how fast Mint Mobile is compared to my last provider, but just how reliable it is. I mean, my last provider has had so many weird dead zones lately where it says I have service, but like not really, and then it goes into SOS, and I'm honestly screaming, SOS, please, somebody just give me some service service for a minute so I can do what I got to do. It's just very unreliable. But ever since I switched to Mint, honestly, I have never had that. It all disappeared along with my huge phone bill. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash Mac. That's mintmobile.com slash Mac. Cut your wireless bill down to just $15 a month at mintmobile.com slash Mac. What do you think is the best color right now? Right now, um, I like the green because it's not too over the top. Um, I quite like the yellow as well. The sort of I burnt like the yellow, yellow. too. Yeah, um, it's really it's a striking color. I mean, you'd have to be brave to have that in your home. I feel like no, um, but I feel but, like it goes with a lot. If you got like a like a neutral kind of t- color tone going on, like you know beiges and and oaks around your house, you can add a yellow and it would like yeah. really pop. I mean, I think they all look pretty good from the back. Um, it's the front that so it's the front I'm not that so sure. Um, and I like the idea of the the, the two tone. I think it's I think it makes the device a lot more special, and it makes it have a a bit more of a sense of depth. And I like it. I just wonder about like the salmon pink and the red. I just don't know how much I like that. It ruined um, the orange for me. Yeah, it, it ruined the orange. The orange was fine the way it was. Maybe it could have been dulled down a little bit. It's pretty bright. But like, then you put the pink on the front, and I'm just like, no, I don't want, I don't want that. I honestly think the silver one's the the safest choice. Yeah, and that and it looks wouldn't nice. Surprise me if that disappeared, um, because no, it, it it wouldn't surprise me if they do bring out Starlight. Starlight on a lot of devices, like with the iPhone 13 and iPhone 14, it replaced silver, so that would make sense. Um, and then if you want silver, you're gonna have to wait for the iMac Pro. We have the blue one. I like the blue one. That one's a nice one. Yeah, the blue one's good as well. I I, I like them all. I do like them all. Um, yeah. And we, we, we're kind of over the colors now, but it was exciting when those were announced. And they do look great in the Apple store when you when you see them all. Yeah. So, yeah, there's really not a whole lot to the 24 then. I mean, yeah. what else that could they do? That should be this do? year, though. It's going to be That's one good. of the first M3 iMacs. Uh, well, one of the first, not through uh, M3 iMacs, but one of the first uh, M3 Macs. Um, and, uh, that should be this year. Um, so in time for what the holidays, thinking, at least. Like fall, like October ish. Yeah. So this could be, uh, it could come out alongside, uh, the iPhones. It wouldn't surprise me, but realistically, I think it will end up being like an October event thing where we get the announcement of M3, which will be a bigger deal than the announcement of M2 because of just how different the chip will be. Yeah. Um, and maybe we also get, alongside that um a couple of other m3 max potentially i don't know what that could be i do wonder about uh like a 13 inch macbook air with m3 and they could even give it to the 15 inch to be honest um even though the 15 inch hasn't been out for very long um which would not make a lot of those customers very happy but (sighs) it it could work um 
and uh, maybe even something like the Mac Mini. Could get it. I just feel like there's a lot of. I feel. I, I just feel like we can't do anything until this iMac comes out first. It might be the first one because where it's been neglected, this is the only uh, Mac product line that has not had M2. Just to skip it completely. So when they show up those charts and say compared to the previous generation device with M3, oh, it's going to um, be a huge. Now with M3, it's going to be massive. So yeah. it would make way more sense that they they show it off with that iMac. Um, and I, the other thing is that you find that what Apple does is when they show off the chip for the first time, a new chip, they like you to focus on not the design of a new device. They don't want you to think about the design. They just want you to think about the chip. So when they introduced M1, what do we get? We got it in the same chassis that we had seen before, the Mac Mini, the uh, the old tapered MacBook Air, and the 13-inch MacBook Pro with the touch bar. Um, so these were all designs that we were familiar with. All that was different really was the chip, and that was why all the reviews and all of the emphasis was on the chip, and it really gave M1 um, its, its moment in the spotlight, which it wouldn't have had if we'd got the MacBook Air redesigned at the same time. Yeah. M2, to a large extent, was quite similar um, because the first Mac announced with M2, I believe, was the 13-inch MacBook Pro, again, with the touch bar. It wasn't <sighs> the MacBook Air. So well, they, were they like, want you to... They were right around the same time, though, right? Yeah, they were announced at the same time, but I think the MacBook Pro was the first one announced to get it. Right. Um, and I think that those review units were also first. It's always so just idea... such a random computer. Yeah. that should, It's not a flagship that gets the first chip. It just It's mind-blowing to me. But it, that's that's kind of like the point of it is that yeah. they want review units and reviewers to um, to to just have that new chip and just focus on that chip. They don't want you to talk about a new design, and that's why it would make sense for the iMac that reviews of them are going to say, "Here's some pretty new colors," but at the same time, you know, everything is about M3, and they're not going to go into, "Oh, it's got this new display. It's now OLED. It's now thinner. Whatever." Yeah, it's just all about the chip which M3 deserves because it should be impressive. I've got high hopes for M3. I don't know if it's just because I've been writing about M3 for so long now and I've done so much research into M3 that I'm just excited for what M3 means. Mm -hmm. um, but we'll see. Um, I have high hopes. I haven't even thought about M3. I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> just, I'm in a different world than you are. I am only focused on what is happening now, which is strange for a rumor site. But, uh, you know, just different aspects of the job. But I, I am interested in the 32-inch iMac, which I think is a good segue into. Uh, well, so we're not expecting a 27 anymore. We're just jumping right to 32. Is that the case? It looks like it. So there were rumors of a, uh, a mini LED 27-inch iMac yeah. for a while. Um, but these also got kind of mixed in with talk of a mini LED external display. And it just hasn't emerged. So... Now it looks like, uh, according to what Mark Gurman is saying, we are zoning in on a 32-inch iMac, which for reference is the same display size as the Pro Display XDR, which is a 6K display. So it seems quite likely that this would also be a 6K display um, of a similar size. I, don't, I know they don't have, uh, uh, you don't see many Pro Display XDRs around, but if you have seen them in the Apple Store, that is a big device. Um, and that is what you can expect from the size of this 32 inch iMac I suppose I mean I've always said if they're going to make like an iMac powered pro device then just make it a pro display XDR body and I'm sure you could fit everything you need to fit in that body uh, yeah. there doesn't need to be much of a change there and it would just look just fine um, but and it could have the chin as well Right. So it, that, that may be the, the thing that makes a difference and provide that additional internal space and better cooling, um, especially it's, if we're anticipating. Speakers. speakers. Yes. Um, <laughs> so it might need a little more. Um, so I imagine we will keep the chin because Apple clearly, you know, for, before we got the 24-inch iMac redesign, we wondered and we all kind of thought, yeah, the chin's going to disappear. The chin is clearly here to stay. It's what um, makes the iMac brand. Yeah. So uh, I think that we will see uh, that and that is where the majority of those components will be housed i just it's mind-blowing that my pro display xdr doesn't have a speaker grill <laughs> it's just it's so bad it could well, probably I have guess, such good speakers think, in there 
they probably think that you know if you're buying a, a five thousand sure. dollar display and you're yeah. buying it for professional purposes, then you probably bought some stupidly expensive speakers that are twice the price of that display. Yeah, even the studio display. I mean, that's not cheap. Most people probably already have speakers. But they still put that in there. I don't know. Sometimes well, I guess it's nice the, to like have a reference. Being, the way that it's being sold with the studio display, I kind of get it in a different way because if you minus the cost of uh, the the build quality compared to competitors, you mm -hmm. minus the webcam and you minus the speakers, it's you know it is kind of in line with what's available sure. and it kind of makes sense in a in a different way. Sure. So we're expecting that to be later on because the chip's not going to be M3. Obviously, we're we're expecting it to be a Pro and Max situation. Yeah. So M3 Pro and M3 Max, which uh, should have come out by the time that this iMac is on the table. So it is still supposed to be an early development, uh, but we're looking at a release date late next year or in early 2025. So by that time, we probably will have got the M3 uh, Pro and M3 Max MacBook Pros, uh, and probably it will also have made its way to the Mac, uh, the, maybe the Max Pro uh, and Max Studio as well. Um, so yeah, I think that would make sense. But... I think there is a gap for this this iMac. I think people really want it. I think people didn't realize how much they liked the the larger iMac until it was gone. I I still kind of stand by. I think my favorite uh, Mac that I've ever owned is the iMac Pro. I I, I don't know what it is. Maybe that? it's because what's that? Why why do you think that was? I've always liked iMacs. I I think the obviously the displays are beautiful. Um, and it's just, it's so clean. Like, that's all I need is just that. Like, I don't need anything else. Uh, I don't need to have a different set. Like, it's just your, your uh, you, it's an all-in-one machine, obviously. And that's just the appeal of it. And then it was just so powerful for the base model. Like, I had a base model one. And I might have upgraded some RAM later on, right? You could do that later on. I'm pretty sure that's what I did. Yeah. Yeah. So I upgraded the RAM and... uh yeah, I mean, that's like all you needed to do. And I, maybe it's because it was right around the time that I got hired to do this job. Uh, and so it was just like the workhorse for everything that I did. Um, and it just had like a special place in my heart. Uh, but it, yeah, just it was my favorite. And it was so clean looking. The space gray was nice. There was no other space gray iMac that you could get. Um, but it's gone now. I don't have it anymore. RIP. Yeah. I think they were I think they were special machines because they were in that interim period when Apple was trying to prove that they still had something for pro desktop users. Um and I think that that space has opened up again in a way that we weren't perhaps expecting because not everyone wants to have a Mac Studio on their desktop and not everyone actually also wants a 27-inch studio display to go with it. Some people now do want a larger, better display than that, but they still want to stay in Apple's ecosystem. And they don't care for changing that monitor. They don't want to have to think about that. They do want an all-in-one package. Um, you know, For me, it certainly would be more appealing to have an all-in-one of that size. And I think that it would showcase Apple's desktop technologies a lot better than something like a Mac Studio. I think in an Apple store, if you saw a 32-inch iMac and you were told this is pretty much other than the Mac Pro. And although you don't get the best of Apple Silicon, you're getting the best of Apple's other hardware. Um, and in terms of what it can engineer in, in terms of display technology and just what sort of um, thermals and other considerations that they would have to make for a device of that size, it could be that kind of flagship Mac in a bit of a different way. Um, and really let them sh show us what the best you can do in terms of display technology is. Show us what the best you can do in terms of design is. Because you can't really do that with the Mac Studio. The Mac Studio is never going to be the best looking Mac. But, but like, how much, how much are you expecting this to be? If this is a almost replica of a, of a, of a Pro Display XDR with mini LED potentially in it, like that just ups the value even more. That's a six thousand dollar monitor, and then you haven't even put in the hardware for the actual computer. What are we expecting this thing to be like? Twelve grand? Well, I wonder because the 
Pro Display XDR probably, if we're being honest, isn't worth the five thousand no. dollars it was worth when it first came out. No, even if it was justifiable then. I think it's less justifiable now because it's not mini LED, but I it's something like mini LED. I don't 100% know about this. It's because it's got local dimming zones, I believe. So it does kind of work like mini LED, even though it's still an LCD display. Right. So it is an advanced display technology. That's what enables it to um, uh, work as a reference monitor. But now we do have mini LED. I mean, we're expecting OLED on a whole bunch of Apple devices starting next year. I don't think Apple can be commanding such a high price for something like mini LED even at that size. So if we assume that maybe that's now worth maybe $2,000, maybe $3,000, and then you take the cost off something like uh, the M2 Max uh, Max Studio. Max Studio, so another two grand. Yeah, so maybe $4,000, maybe five. I'm but guessing it's got to be five because the, the, the original iMac Pro started at forty nine ninety nine, and this seems better in every way. Yeah, and inflation. I think that would make sense. <laughs> And it would be less than the Mac Pro, crucially. So it would fit quite nicely in between the Mac Studio and the Mac Pro. And then you can consider when you buy your Mac Studio, well, by the time I add a studio display to my uh, Mac Studio, uh, that's going to be what, like three and a half thousand dollars roughly. Um, so it you could then consider, well, if I'm going to up to the uh, I'm going to add some RAM, you know, maybe I want a bigger display, maybe it's then worth making the leap. Um, mm. Or if you can't, or you don't want to, then it just makes it a little bit clearer cut. So I don't so much object to those price, uh, the, the differentiation in price, but I don't feel like the 24-inch iMac has, has taken off in the same way that the 27-inch model did. And this is the one thing that that larger model won't be able to do because you still see that 27-inch iMac model everywhere. You You see it in... I don't know, like hotel lobbies. You see it yeah. um, in, in, when you go to the dentist. It's like it, it, so many people have those 27-inch iMacs. Right. I don't see, I don't think I've ever actually seen a 24-inch iMac in the wild other than just in an Apple store, obviously. And this 32-inch iMac true. is going to be too expensive to be like that. So I just wonder when we'll start seeing those 24-inch iMacs come through or is there something I, Maybe we're just not, not in the right doing? place. Those are, those are like more fashion- like statements and and like art like pieces that can like be a part of the decor of the place that you're in so maybe like you know a doctor's office doesn't need something that you know vibrant and making a statement they just need something simple and bigger than a 24 inch iMac honestly but then they were using they they have been using to date a large retina display iMac uh, on Mac OS and what is that? They're, they're not going to move to a Mac Mini and a uh, studio display. Right. No. And so, and, and, and this 32 inch iMac is pricing out everybody as well. So, I mean, I, they, I think they still definitely need the 27 inch, like a, a standard model. If it was like the same had. design as the 24 inch, um, that would be great. I think that that would be really popular. And yeah. if they would offer an M3 Pro version of that, I think that would be immensely popular but it's so like, like the mac Mi- it. like the mac mini where the mac mini only has yeah. the pro and not the max yeah yeah i think that it would fit and i think that a lot of people would be willing to spend just a little more to get that um significantly more capable chip and a slightly larger display um in the same way that it's a shame that the 15 inch macbook air didn't come with an m2 pro option because i think that would have been like a like a macbook pro light for a lot of people. Um, yeah. Maybe we will get it eventually because it has happened with the Mac Mini, as you say. So maybe we will get that long term. Uh, but I do think there is there is room for like a like a middle ground Mac where maybe you don't you just don't need a pro machine. You don't need the absolute best display technologies. You don't need a load of ports. You don't need a Max chip. But you do want just a little more than the base M1 and maybe a little bit more screen real estate. Yeah. What about the release date? Because, I mean, we've seen reports with 2024, but then also early 2025. That's just, that's too far for me. I want to see something soon. Well, by then, you wonder, are we getting into M4 territory? Right. I mean. And then again, by the time this comes out, it will already have been out for quite a while. I Um, I feel like if this is going to happen, it's got to be next year, right? With the M3 Pro and Max. You'd hope so, but. 
you you just I I don't know, and I'm very confused about Apple's whole chip strategy at this point um, because. I don't understand what is happening with the MacBook Air. I don't understand how they're going to bring M3 to the MacBook Air soon, considering that they have just released the M2 15-inch. They are either going to disappoint those customers um, or they're going to split the models up, which will be really weird. And the other thing that I find really, really strange is Vision Pro with M2. Because by the time that comes out, M2 will be an old chip. By the time that Vision Pro goes international, and is available in Canada and the UK, which will be, it could be toward the end of next year. We are going to be like, that will be when we're expecting this iMac to even start, which as I say, is M4 territory. So by the time maybe I am able to buy a Vision Pro headset in the UK, it's going to be M4 and R3 or M4 and R4. Um, (laughs) Or R two, three. Wait, what? What did they call the the other chip? Is it? It was R one. Um, R one, because it's the first one. But I feel I felt like yeah. for some reason they tried to make it like R two and M two. <laughs> yeah. um, so I I think it's just a bit odd. It's why I kind of wouldn't be surprised if at the last minute before they ship Vision Pro, they say, "Oh, actually, it's got M three inside." I, I was just gonna say, do you think they would do that? Because I, I I that wouldn't be like anything crazy. I would be like, yeah, that makes sense. We're we're a little behind, but I also definitely see it being m2 and then yeah. six months later and <laughs> m3 one comes out and we're all just pissed because we just spent 3500 dollars. well the the that... successor to vision pro is not expected until 2025 and you can bet it will be late 2025 so we will have an m2 device in the lineup on a on a very important very expensive device and it could be available until like september 2025 so what is going on with the M series chips? I, I just don't I don't really know anymore. Yeah. I don't know either. But it'll be interesting to see because yeah. M3 is is it is significant the same way that the A17 is significant. Um because for context, the uh the all of Apple's chips are currently based on 5 nanometer and they have been since 2020. So every single chip we have had since then has been basically the same technology. I know Apple said that the A16 was four nanometer. It's not really four nanometer. It's just that's a marketing Mm -hmm. thing. It's all the same technology. So we are making the biggest chip jump we have had since 2020. And people forget about it now. But the whole reason why the A14 was a big deal and the reason why the M1 was a big deal wasn't actually really just because it was Apple Silicon. It's because it was that improvement in fabrication process that let it do what it does right um so we're having that again we are having an m1 moment again this year um and that is exciting because it's not just performance it's it's efficiency as well so we are talking about because of m3 devices with better battery life we're talking about uh, you know macbook pros that will cross the threshold of 24 hour battery life um it's i think that's extremely exciting and obviously for the iphone with the a17 it's the same thing as well longer battery life as well as better performance and apple can choose what they want to lean into and i'll bet that they will lean more into efficiency with this because performance is already so good well who doesn't want more battery life you know yeah (laughs) and you can't squeeze that out unless you uh unless it ultimately comes down to the node and the fabrication process to make those savings you can't do it from the same thing that's why we haven't seen much battery life improvement in the last three years or they've just been changing the physical size of the batteries but there's not been much you know difference especially in terms of uh, i think the m2 max get one extra hour of battery life over the m1 max on average but it's not really a massive difference Um, oh you're saying between apple silicon not between intel and apple silicon yeah because there's a huge difference there (laughs) oh yeah Huge um, but that difference. ultimately that ultimately comes down to fabrication process because Apple yeah. was not shipping five nanometer no. uh, Max because Intel wasn't offering them. So right. I, I think it's it's all quite exciting. Um, I think the chip stuff this year people have kind of forgotten about a little, but this is what underpins this twenty four inch iMac, and apparently M three will underpin this new iMac Pro. Um, so it's it's worth keeping an eye out for this M three stuff. Do you think Apple will ever uh, make a display that matches the iMac, but it's just a display? Maybe. I can see a bigger studio display. 
I can see the studio display being offered in 27 and 32 inch sizes. Yeah, but that wouldn't match your iMac. That would look so strange. I'm talking about colors and everything. The answer is no. The answer is no, but like, wouldn't that be fun (laughs) for those who want a dual display that matches the... If you had a 24 inch iMac and you had two studio displays either side, they would match up, right? Sure, yeah, because you have the the evenness of having one on one side and one on the other, but like boy, and they're all LCD. Boy, is that quite an overkill! <laughs> and it would look odd to have two large displays either side of the the smaller one. Yeah, I, that's the thing. It's just like it's so hard to do a dual display or three displays unless you're ready to drop your entire life savings on three monitors. But do you know why? I think I think I have the reason why Apple has not done that. Why? Apple hasn't done it because they are going to provide you with the ability to have that. Uh, oh, with iPads? With, no, with uh, Vision Pro. Oh, God. <laughs> if you want that multi monitor experience, that's, that's true. the way Apple's going to provide it to you long term. I did have two to three large windows right in front of me. And if you think about um, what Apple Silicon is able to drive now, in terms of displays. I mean, I don't know what it was with the M2 Ultra. It was something like 12 4K displays or something uh, that you would just use. It was wild. How many studio display or pro displays XDRs was it? Was it six? It might have been something it like that. It was insane. Yeah, six or I'm eight. Like, but, I'm like, you know, you're never going to do that in the real world, but maybe with no. Vision Pro, you would. You would maybe drive multiple. I mean, they wouldn't be 4K. They wouldn't actually be 4K, but you could be driving a whole load of external displays i think that as it stands you can only project one mac display with vision pro um okay. but inevitably eventually you'll be able to do more so yeah uh, i think this is why apple is kind of maybe that's why they haven't done that they don't care because they want you to they they want you to buy vision pro for that which I suppose makes sense. You know, they don't want to invest in technology that they see as old technology. They want to keep things moving. And when Vision Pro, uh, the second generation comes out, and maybe it's, I don't know, two 5K displays per eye. Uh, well, one 5K display per eye. Or, you know, a few years down the line, we've got 6K displays per you better eye. Jump in. You, you re- better jump in while it's $3,500 because this is about to get even more insane. <laughs> Well, by 2025, who knows? I don't know. Yeah. Um, well, that, by then, I'm hoping for the, the lighter version, right? Yeah, and I, I expect that the the cheaper, well, I guess it will just be called Apple Vision, um, yeah. but the Vision headset should really uh, be the same specifications as Vision Pro. Um, I think that would make sense that we, when, it's a little bit like with something like the iPhone 5C or the uh, iPhone 10R, where we were just being shown uh, specifications that we were otherwise fairly familiar with um because what can they take away they're not gonna with vision pro they're not gonna take stuff out of it for the vision headset they're not gonna say oh well now you don't get 4k displays you're gonna get 2k displays because that would ruin it they're not gonna say you don't get eyesight because that's clearly sp- so fundamental to the experience uh, if anything what we, what vision pro is right now at that price point is what apple vision will be in 2025 at i don't know one and a half thousand dollars yeah so you're just thinking they're going to use the same stuff older hardware for for less and maybe you'll get m3 with it or m4 by then but i i don't see what they can take away something's got to be new to distinguish that from an old apple vision pro because like what what would stop you from getting that at that point for like 750 bucks on ebay or something some design changes i Uh wouldn't surprise me if they did opt for more use of uh plastics um and a design that definitely doesn't feel quite so premium because we've seen them do this i mean whether it's with the iphone 5c and i know that was an unusual example uh but definitely the iphone 10r and iphone 11 i think they're horribly ugly i really do they have Got huge them. bezels they're really thick uh i don't think they look good at all and you can imagine if they did that kind of thing to a vision pro just use a little more plastic make it a little chunkier but it's the same specs. It'll probably be lighter though, and you got to watch out. It might be more, more comfortable. <laughs> well, maybe. Um, but then maybe by then they can make. They believe that they can make Vision Pro two lighter as well. 
I mean, I didn't. I only had it for thirty minutes, but I, I didn't think it was bad in terms of the weight. I mean, it's definitely noticeable. It, it, the, the, again, we've talked about this before, but it was just the head strap. Like once I got it on and in the right spot, it was fine. I probably could have gone another forty-five minutes comfortably before I would like okay, maybe take this thing off my face for a minute. The two-hour mark seems about right. I don't know how we got on Apple Vision Pro, but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, those are uh, that's pretty much it on the on the IMAX because we've already moved on to something else. But uh, we'll we'll spare you on more Vision Pro talk. Um, maybe we should do a and if you want to hear something and let us know in the comments down below. Maybe we'll do another Vision Pro and get a guest on here that that would offer up some uh, you know and let us know who you, who you might want us to chat with about it. Uh, but yeah, catch everybody in the uh, the next episode.